Trump on Univision, there were a couple of key questions, one of which was about uh, winning back your vo- uh, your vote. Will you, I need you to win back my vote, Mr. Uh, Mr. Trump. One of the differences in the Univision town hall versus the Fox News woman, woman town hall is that Fox apparently packed the town hall with Trump supporters. They didn't say they did it, but they yeah. it was all women that were from Republican groups in town. And this one seemed like you actually got some questions from people that may have been Trump supporters at one time, but had some questions now. This is what Kim is just saying is really important because it is the fakery that's associated with Fox. Fox set up a town hall because it's really odd. It's a women's town hall. And, you know, one of the issues that Trump has from an electoral standpoint is trying to win over women, right? I mean, you you essentially stacked a court so that you take away women's reproductive freedoms. So they no longer can do what they want with their body. So the idea somehow that you'd have a room full, a town hall room full of supporters is extraordinary. I mean, you'd think it would just be on some level textured with people who might disagree. But what Kim has just noted is so important. They, in essentially uh, casting, put into place people who are already massive Trump supporters. They were leaders of the Republican club in their communities. There were MAGA leaders. There's some of them were wearing MAGA merch, and that was the whole crowd. So yeah. Trump basically coasted through his town hall. Mm-hmm. Compare that to the mauling that was attempted of Kamala Harris in her Fox interview. But this is Trump. I am a uh, Republican, no longer registered, though. This is Univision. Um, this is his a real town hall that he was doing I at Univision. I want to give you the opportunity to try to uh, win back um, my vote. Okay. Um, you're 56 years old, born um, in New Jersey of Cuban and maybe origin. In action during your presidency and the last few years, um, sort of, you know, was a little disturbing to me. You know, what uh, happened during January 6th um, and the fact that, you know, you waited so long to take action while your supporters were attacking the Capitol. Um, coronavirus. I thought we were the public was misled during coronavirus and that morning many more lives could have been saved if we would have been informed better. Um, And also people in your administration who don't support you. I'm curious how people so close to you and your administration no longer want to support you. So why would I want to support you? Um, If you would answer these questions for me, I would really appreciate it and give you the opportunity. That's, you know, your own vice president doesn't want to support you now. Thank you, Ramiro. So uh, the people that don't support a very small portion, we have a tremendous, about 97 percent of the people in the administration support me. But because it's me, somebody doesn't support, they get a little publicity. Uh, The vice president, I disagree with him on what he did. Uh, I totally disagreed with him on what he did. Uh, Very importantly, you had uh, hundreds of thousands of people come to Washington. They didn't come because of me. They came because of the election. They thought the election was a rigged election, and that's why they came. Some of those people went down to the Capitol. I said, peacefully and patriotically, nothing done wrong at all, nothing done wrong. And uh, action was taken, strong action. Ashley Babbitt was killed. Nobody was killed. Uh, there were no guns down there. We didn't have guns. The others had guns, but we didn't have guns. And uh, when I say we, these are people that walked down. This was a tiny percentage of the overall, which nobody sees and nobody nobody shows. But that was a day of love from the standpoint of the millions. It's like hundreds of thousands. It could have been the largest group I've ever spoken before. They asked me to speak. I went and I spoke. And I used the term peacefully and patriotically. If you look at the Democrats, what they well, say... Stop right there. Stop Maxine right there. Waters, I mean, this is obviously this is Clinton. total BS. You can see it for yourself. Uh, I don't think that guy's got going to vote for Trump. <laughs> look at his yeah, face. I don't, he's, like, I don't, no. he's not winning him over. I mean, it's, <laughs> no. a, it's a complete recharacterization of what happened that day. Yeah. And I will remind everyone that Trump was tweeting or Xing or whatever, saying on his Truth Social, come to Washington on this date. It's going to be wild. Those are his words uh there you know the revisionist nature of trump's remarks just 
crazy. Yeah. So that was Trump on Univision, and he took a little bit of um, that kind of question where it was you know there were some headwinds, but then Trump handles it all with you know both the filibuster and you know and pivoting and making stuff up completely. I um, saw, I saw a no- guy. Oh, go ahead. Know, there's another uh, Univision uh, thing I think uh, which kind of calls Trump out on his. Uh, the Haitians eating the pets and whatever, mm-hmm. and we'll, you want to run it now? We'll run it now. Yeah, let's uh, do it. I think it's pretty good, and then I'll get to Kamala Harris. So, this, he's being uh, in Spanish. He lives in Arizona, Rio Rico. I am a registered Arizona. Republican, but at this time, I am undecided. Durante la campaña se han utilizado muchas teorías de conspiración. During the campaign, there has been some conspiracy theories in use. Le doy un ejemplo, si me permite. If you allow me, I would like to give an example of it. Las autoridades de Springfield, Ohio, han aclarado una y otra vez que los haitianos no se están comiendo los perros ni los gatos de sus gentes. The authorities in Springfield, Ohio, have one more than one time clarified that the Haitians are not eating their cats and their dogs. Sin embargo, usted les quiere revocar su permiso que tienen para residir legalmente en este país. Nonetheless, you want to revoke the permit they have to legally reside in this country. Mi pregunta con todo respeto es si usted verdaderamente cree que estas personas se comen las mascotas de la gente. My question to you very respectfully is, do you really believe that these people are eating the people's pets? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And this was just reported. I was, re- I was just saying what was reported. That's been reported. Uh, and eating other things, too, that uh, they're not supposed to be. But this is all I do is report. I, w- I have <laughs> not. I was there. I'm going to be there. And we're going to take a look, and I'll give you a full report when I do. But that's been in the newspapers and reported pretty broadly. I will say this as far as Springfield is concerned, because I do know that situation. You have a city of 50 Stop right here, Tony. People. I'm just going to say, so you went with an incendiary statement about how they're eating pets and dogs, but it's just something that you, you, you say was reported. By the way, it wasn't reported. It was completely mm-hmm. concocted. And... Uh, you're saying, now I'm going to go check it out and I'll let you know what I find. Now you're going to say that? It was a month ago you started this BS and it actually brought a a, a community that has legitimate problems uh, handling a lot of the infrastructure associated with uh, the influx of people. It brought that community to its knees to the point that the mayor had to beg you to stop with this stuff and you still didn't stop. So now you're saying you're going to go check it out to see if it's legit? It, you know, it's just crazy what the shape-shifting that he does. Please continue, Tony. Well, and they've added almost 30,000 uh, migrants into the city. If you were a person that, that, that lived st- there, Stop again, please. Lived- That's not accurate. Kim, how many, how many Haitians have now been added to, uh, to the city of Springfield, Ohio? Thank you for asking, Mark. According to the Springfield News Sun, uh, they think that at 15 to 20,000. Uh, thank the you. Pop- the population of Springfield is 58,000. Don't get me wrong, uh, that many people can still stress Mm -hmm. uh, city services, and they were stressed and are stressed in some ways. But again, let's not pull facts out of our butt, which is (laughs) sadly the only place that this gentleman gets his facts. Go right ahead, please, Tony, and then we'll finish up. Springfield, Ohio, and all of a sudden you couldn't get into a hospital, you couldn't get your children into a school. Uh, you wouldn't be able to buy groceries. You can no longer pay the rent because the government's paying rent. Any of that, if, if any of that happened, it would be a disaster for you and you wouldn't be happy. Uh, we want to make our people safe and secure and we want to make them happy. But Springfield, Ohio is a, a perfect example. You have a, a town, a beautiful little town with no problems. All of a sudden, they have 30 or 32,000 people dropped into now, the now town. it's up to 32,000 stop right there first of all language. it wasn't a beautiful little town with no problems sir it was a beautiful little town that actually was struggling in many ways and the influx of immigrants helped revive the town all of a sudden they were actually building the economic engines to have a thriving community and they did and then the over influx of 
of immigrants stressed some of those existing systems, that infrastructure associated with hospitals and education, et cetera. So that's that's a fair point. These things have to be handled in some kind of way that accommodates that influx. But this cartoonish way in which Trump suggests a narrative is just, it's offensive. And you can see him skipping from one made up fact to the other. That's Donald Trump and Udavision. I wanted to start with that. Now so to Kamala Harris. Sorry, go ahead. Quick, just yeah. quickly, what he says next is... They come to this country and they don't don't speak the language. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bail before that. I'm just I'm short on time. He just used a translator. Go ahead, to run that. It is. I yeah, mean, he just. What? <laughs> a, a town, this guy just used. Yeah, go ahead. Beautiful little town with no problems. All of a sudden, they have thirty or thirty-two thousand people dropped into the town. Most of whom don't speak the language. Most of whom don't speak the language. <laughs> Can at you all. imagine that, sir? And what not they're doing the is they're looking all over for interpreters. Well. I mean, I think you can't just destroy our country. It's uh, maybe some yeah. people disagree anyway. with me, but you can't you can't put in a very short period of time thirty two thousand people into a fifty thousand people town and expect things to go well. It's okay. a disaster. Yeah, yeah, un disaster, un, un disaster, señor. Yeah, imagine they do not speak the English. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.